13 Reasons Why is a hit show on Netflix. It's already had two seasons and they're gearing up for the third season. And ever since this series first launched over on Netflix, there's been a lot, a lot of controversy around it. And just recently, there's been a new study correlating the launch of season one of 13 Reasons Why and teenage suicide. And that's exactly what we're gonna be talking about in this video, but there is a very strong trigger warning because we are going to be talking about sensitive subjects. If you are somebody who is struggling right now, please check out the description, turn off this video, and dial the suicide helpline. What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul, where we talk about the problem, but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, something that I'm very, very, very passionate about is mental health awareness. And I also like to take topics that are going on in pop culture or in the YouTube community and things like that. So if you're into that, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. So some of my first videos that actually took off on YouTube were my season two videos about 13 Reasons Why. I did a lot of character breakdowns, I did some social commentary, because like I mentioned, this show has been very controversial. So the history of it, and for those of you who don't know, the show is based on a book and it follows teenagers and it centers around a young woman by the name of Hannah who ends up taking her own life for multiple reasons right and a lot of people like spoke out against this when it first launched saying like oh this romanticizes suicide and this is dangerous they don't have the proper information going out there there's so many issues right and i was somebody who actually defended the show and at the end of this video i'm going to give my thoughts and opinions but i'm just trying to give you the context of what's actually happening right now because a major story just got released i saw this being shared all over the place because i'm in different mental health groups i follow a bunch of different mental health twitter accounts and everything like that but i i am somebody who was of the belief that this isn't really affecting people in the way they think it is but anyways i'm going to be reading from the npr article so the so npr didn't actually do this study but i'm going to read their article and link it down below and they talk about the study okay so it first says in the month following the show's debut in march 2017 there was a 28.9 increase in suicide among americans ages 10 to 17 said the study published Monday in the Journal of, Amer of the American Academy of Child and Adolescent Psychiatry. The number of suicides was greater than seen in any single month over the five year period researchers examined. Over the rest of the year, there were 195 more youth suicides than expected given historical trends. So it then goes on to say this, and this is very, very, very important, okay? Because we look at correlation and we look at causation, all right? So it says, researchers warn that their study could not prove causation. Some unknown third factor might have been responsible for increase, they said. Still, citing the strong correlation, they cautioned against exposing children and adolescents to the series. Okay, so correlation versus causation. A lot of studies show correlation. It is not very often, especially with mental health, where you see causation. Like, for example, there was a correlation between people who grew up in an abusive uh, household and then getting into an abusive relationship when they're older or being an abuser in a relationship. So what this study is saying is, like, just looking at the trends, looking at when this show was released, and suicides between the age of 10 and 17, they spiked. Like a 28.7 increase is massive like that is huge and that's one of the reasons why i want to make this video because i was personally shocked when i saw how big that increase actually was all right now the second part of this is what i think is pretty interesting the spokesperson noted that the study conflicts with research published last week out of the university of pennsylvania that study found that young adults ages 18 to 29 who watched the entire second season of the show reported declines in suicide ideation and self-harm relative to those who did not watch the show at all. So I, I think there's a few things that we could take from these studies, all right? And again, I will link this down below. I would love to know your thoughts and opinions on this topic down in the comments below. So it's saying that between the ages of 10 and 17, suicide rates went up. But another study following people who were adults, right? Technically an adult, 18 um, to 29, the idea of suicidal ideation dropped. So 
when I look at this, when I look at this and read these stories and read these studies and everything like that, I look at it, I'm like, okay, what's the difference? What's happening here? And mental health is becoming more and more of a topic of conversation, right? And around 18 to 29, like the college years, your 20s and everything, like you've made it through like a brutal part of your life, right? High school can be so stressful. That is when a lot of symptoms of mental health issues, mental illnesses start to happen. And by the way, disclaimer, I am not a licensed therapist or a psychologist, but this is something I'm very passionate about and I do do a lot of research and reading and things like that. So in my opinion, what I would guess is people in that age group, 18 to 29, they're looking for more solutions, right? They've seen that they've gone through a very difficult part of their life and now there's more stuff to look out uh, look out to, right? And like, here's the thing, like in high school, like that is your whole world, that is your universe, that is your reality. Everything that happens there, the bullying, the teasing, not being good enough, trying to fit in, that is your entire universe, right? But it's kind of like being on like an elevator, right? And then when the doors open, and you can step out into the entire world, okay? Like in high school or even in middle school, you're trapped in this very small area. And once you graduate, so many things change. Like if you're a teenager watching this, I cannot tell you, I cannot tell you how much things changed after high school. And you can ask just about any adult, right? Like if you're an adult watching this, let me know down in the comments below. Because like when you're in high school, you're like, oh, you know, there, there's the popular kids, there's these people, there's that. And you think it's gonna be like this forever. But everybody, once you leave high school, is just a person. Now there's still kind of like cliques and like groups and everything like that once you get to college. But like for the most part, like you all go your separate ways. Like I can't even tell you I can't even tell you like all the popular kids from high school. I don't know what they're doing. I know some of them fell off. I know some of them, like myself, became addicted to drugs and alcohol and everything like that. And like, I, I, I just don't, I don't think enough kids understand how much things are going to change after high school, right? So I do believe that, you know, more people who watch this when they were older realize like, oh my God, like this is a wake up call. I need to get help. now. For kids 10 to 17 and how suicide rates jumped up. Like, I was actually just talking to Dr. Mark Golston on the phone this morning. He's a suicide expert. I've done some videos with him um, on my channel. We're gonna do more in the future, but I was talking to him about this. And today he's actually speaking on a panel at a high school um, and it's about suicide prevention. And something that he was telling me, he's like, everybody gets punched in the face, right? But it's about how you get, how you react to it. Like how you react and respond and make sure you don't do anything dumb while you're still suffering the pain of getting punched in the face. Because once you come out on the other side of it, you have this new kind of resilience. And he often refers to the 72 hour hold. And I've been talking about that in my Etika videos, but this is one of the reasons why people who are suicidal, when they go to a psych hospital, they're, they're on this 72 hour hold, right? Because one of the things is, is like once you get away from like the potential of like harming yourself or harming others, like you realize like, oh my God, like your emotions aren't running as high, you chill out, you get this new perspective, right? And we know, we know on a biological level, kids are more impulsive. I've talked many times on my channel about the prefrontal cortex. Prefrontal cortex is responsible for a wide variety of things. One of them is impulse control. One of them is emotional regulation. So. Kids who do not have a fully developed prefrontal cortex are impulsive and extremely emotional. So they can make very bad decisions based on their emotions. So what is the solution? And here's where my opinion comes in about 13 reasons why. I do believe we need to be talking about this stuff more and not less. Like something that I mentioned in my videos um, about the second season when I was doing like character breakdowns and just kind of social commentary on what was going on was that there's this idea, there's this idea of don't talk to kids about serious subjects like suicide and mental health and maybe bad things won't happen. And that is absolutely ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous, all right? So we as adults, I'm a parent, we need to keep those lines of communication open. But something that this study says, and I'll put it up on the screen right now, what they're talking about, is we have proof, there is evidence 
that young people are highly influenced by what they are watching, all right? So this is, this is goes for like two things, two things, okay? As parents, I'm a parent, some of you are parents, maybe you're an aunt, maybe you're an uncle, maybe you're just like a mentor to somebody younger than you, make sure you know what they're watching. Make sure you know what they're watching. I'm not saying that you gotta like spy on them and have all this like monitoring stuff to see what they're watching. You don't need to go that far, but have conversations and say, what are you watching? Walk in the room every once in a while. My son is obsessed with YouTube, watches a ton of YouTube. I know what creators he's watching, what those creators are about, what he's watching. And if there's something that might be a little controversial that he's watching, we have a conversation about it. He's only 10 years old. The second thing is, this goes back to why I am constantly making videos about YouTubers and every, other things going on in the YouTube community, as well as in pop culture, because young people are influenced by what they are watching. And that's why we as creators have a responsibility to recognize that the young people watching our content, our actions, our behaviors are being influenced by that. So the overall message, the moral of this story that I wanna to give to all of you is, as adults, we need to have more conversations with our kids. We need to talk to them about this. We need to intervene sooner than uh, later. We need to know what the signs are of depression, of potential suicide. We have to know these things, all right? Um, I was watching uh, the video by Ask a Mortician about the, the, what happened at Columbine, and she talked about how uh, one of the guy's moms is actually out there and like trying to increase awareness about all this stuff too, to try to help prevent future school shootings, which is also something that was touched on in 13 Reasons Why, all right? But anyways, again, I've linked the article down below. Please let me know your thoughts, your comments down below. I know 13 Reasons Why is trying to do a better job um, putting in disclaimers, and they did a bunch of stuff before season two. Netflix hasn't made a full statement about this. They made something brief. It's in that article if you wanna check it out, all right? But anyways, that's all I got for this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell because I make a ton of videos. Videos. And thank you so, so much to everybody supporting the channel over on Patreon. And if you like what I'm doing here, you want to help support the channel, get involved in our monthly Q&A and all that stuff, click or tap on that Patreon icon right there, all right? Thanks again so, so much for watching. I'll see you next time.